Hey everyone, welcome to part one of my in-depth review of the new Necron Codex, people. I got my hands on it. Interesting stuff in here. Really interesting stuff. So, uh, yeah, as, as I do with all my Codex reviews, I will be going in-depth on various sections in each video, one at a time, probably six or seven videos. That way I can cover it in a good amount of depth for each one. And, uh, yeah, so I picked up the Necron Codex. So a little bit of history on the Necrons. Basically, the Necrons didn't get much love for many years, and then they got updated in late 5th edition, just before 6th. They were the last uh, official Codex, I believe, of 5th edition. And then they were kind of broken for a little bit because they were the first big Codex to get a lot of access to a lot of flyers, cheap flyers. And when flyers became super awesome in 6th edition, Necrons were kind of the broken codex because you could take a bunch of night size and doom size and just destroy your opponent. And uh, yeah, but eventually the other armies caught up. And because plus very few things had Skyfire at that time, so flyers kind of dominated the scene. They can still do pretty well now, but most armies have an answer to them. Um, and uh, and yeah, so now obviously now we're in seventh edition. Necrons got their new book, and I did predict a few things. And it, obviously this book is consistent with many of the 7th edition codices so far. A, very few models at launch, one new Necron Overlord, you know. B, uh, moving around the Force Organization chart. That didn't happen much in this codex. The only thing that was major was Emotech the Stormlord is now a Lord of War. That was the other one. Obviously, Lords of War now in codices other than Dark Eldar. But uh, unlike the other codices, this actually got vehicles in... Of course, they already exist in the Apocalypse book, but they have vehicles now in the Lords of War section in this codex. So that's awesome. So maybe, you know, that's great. Like the Stampa in the Orc codex, for example. It's really nice to see... Um, it's nice to see vehicles in the uh, in the codex. And, uh, yeah, and obviously rearranging some rules, uh, removing of what... You know, a lot of the broken rules in most codices have been removed slowly but surely. Uh, which that ha definitely happened in this codex. Mind Shackle Scarabs, pretty much gone. It's nerfed into the ground. Um, the Doom Scythes weapons were nerfed. Uh, Night Scythes are still pretty good. They got more expensive. And uh, and yeah. And Reanimation Protocols was hugely changed, which I'll be going over in a few minutes. But now it's basically like an army-wide... Uh, anything that would have had reanimation protocol before, so they died, they got back up again potentially. Now it's basically a feel no pain. Uh, it's a feel no pain roll. So you just roll it after you fail a wound. You roll this dice on a five up. Usually now it's going to be a four up for most armies probably. But if you ta don't take the Decurian Necron detachment, it'll be a five up probably. So it's a feel no pain. Just a standard feel no pain. And if he fails the feel no pain, dead. Removed from play. Gone. So that'll save some time in the game. I'm pretty sure that'll save a lot of time, because now it's just a feel no pain. No more constantly getting up again, which is unfortunate, because that's what Necron players loved. You know, we loved losing most of our squad, and then half of them getting right back up again using a Resurrection Orb. But uh, now it's just half the time that model may not die. So uh, it'll be a four-up feel no pain, probably. In, in most, If you're taking a Decurian Necron uh, detachment, it'll be most likely a four-up feel no pain. So, yeah. It's called a different thing. It's called Reanimation Protocol. But it's essentially a feel no pain. So, uh, first, as I said, my first impressions are, it's a very interesting codex. I think it's interesting. Um, I think it's going to be competitive. I'm concerned at a couple things still, but uh, it, it's an interesting codex. It's, very, it's different. It's very different from the previous one. Because, obviously, the reanimation got changed. Uh, the new Force Org, is v the new detachment is very weird. Uh, rather than a... Take this, you know, you have access to this many of each slot. It's actually a summation of formations, essentially. So you take a, a bunch of formations you have access to, you take them all, and that's your, your Decurian detachment, which I'll be going over in a moment. The only downside of this Decurian detachment is, is it's predictable, and you have to have a minimum of a certain amount of models. So, for example, right now with my army, I don't have a very large Necron force. I only have about 3,500 points. I don't actually have several of the minimum requirements to play the Decurian Necron detachment. So I can't play it yet. I have to pick up some Tomb Blades and some Immortals. And that's the thing. So you will always be forced, if you want to play with that detachment, you'll always be forced to bring Tomb Blades and you'll always be forced to bring Immortals. And it might get a little boring, I think, um, because you're forced to bring certain models. This is the first time in a, real, in a codex where 
models are required to bring the detachment. Usually it's, it's like different slots are required, but you can bring any model within that slot. Now it's actual models are required. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know if a lot of people will like that because essentially you are forcing them to bring certain models. But uh, it's interesting. I think it's still going to be competitive. My biggest concern was that Necrons get walked all over in the, um, in the psychic phase. And other than the fact that they got access to Adamantium Will now, which I believe is plus one to Deny the Witches, um, they have access to it with a couple different things. But uh, a couple Adamantium Will, that's basically it. Um, they don't really have much to... Yeah, plus one bonus to Deny the Witch. So they don't really still have that much to deny the witches, and that's the problem. I am concerned that they're going to get walked all over with, but that's their that was their weakness before. Unfortunately, it wasn't really addressed. Um, Goss got slightly better. Goss now is like a poison six up. Earlier, it used to just affect vehicles on a six up. It glanced uh, on a six or eight glanced vehicles. You know, six to to hit, um, on the pen. You know, if you if you hit a vehicle on a six, it's a pen automatically. No pen. Sorry, glance. I kept saying pen. It's a glance. Please don't blame me for that. Uh, it's an automatic lance on sixes. Now it's an automatic wound as well on sixes. So it's poisoned, essentially, six up. So it's kind of like the neck. It's kind of like the Eldar, but not as good because it doesn't rend. But it still means that uh, your warriors can shoot toughness eight, wraith blade, uh, sorry, wraith knights, and wraith blades, and, and you know, anything wraith, you know, wraith guard, and, and you know, and, uh, and it'll still wound them. So that's good. It'll help them on the, on the higher toughness monster creatures. It, uh, it wounds, you know? That's pretty nice. Um, as I said, huge point reductions across the board, basically. Other than a few things, everything got cheaper or stayed the same. So not bad there. HQs, slashed in prices. Um, elites, to me, is where this codex really shines now. Because the elites got dirt cheap. Really cheap. So, and obviously you can still take a normal force org if you want of this codex, and that might be actually the way to go for a few things. Um, I'm going to build a few, uh, i got to pick up a few squads of stuff in the near future so I can play this. But, uh, shoot, I'm kind of in my, I'm kind of in my high February pain challenge, so. Alright, we'll see about that. So yeah, um, new warlord traits, kind of weak. You know, also they got tr transcendent contents in the... Uh, in the heavy support, that's pretty cool. Uh, the force, the uh, formations are cool. Uh, the artifacts are pretty good, pretty standard artifacts. I think some of them could be useful, some of them not. And uh, yeah, basically what they did was they removed a lot of the options. They very much streamlined this codex in a lot of ways. There used to be a variety of options where you choose, like, especially when it comes to the Royal Court, for example, because you chose a crypt tech, there were five different types of crypt techs, each with their own benefits, and da 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 da, gone. One type of crypt tech, some war gear, much more expensive crypt tech, that's it. No more, like, this type, gone, right? Much more streamlined. Uh, what you find is you'll be not, I don't think you'll be taking as much war gear on your overlords and lords and HQs anymore. So again, a lot less war gear, more streamlined, easier to play with, which has been the theme of 7th edition 40k codices. So, that's my first impressions. Pretty good. I think it's going to be a competitive codex still. It's not top of the line, but that's been pretty much the same. It's very much in line with the 7th edition codices so far. So let's go over... Uh, the Warlord traits... No, actually, I think we should, the best way to start is with this new Force Organization chart. Because it is interesting. So it's called the, the Necron Decurion Detachment. And as I said, it's not a normal Force Org anymore. It's now a summation of formations. You can still take the normal Battle Forge Army. Have the option of that. But uh, the benefit of the Necurian, the, the Decurion Detachment is that you, um, it's called Ever Living. Models in this attachment with the reanimation protocols receive a plus one bonus to reanimation protocol rolls. So plus one bonus. Now the weird thing, I'll go over that. Reanimation, there's a really dumb line in it that I don't think is very intelligent, but I'll, I'll talk about that after. And models in this attachment with the living metal rule, ignore crush, stun, and crew shaken results, but still lose a hall point. So your monoliths, for example, will lose a hall point, but... It'll still bail fire as normal. 
And it's plus one to your bonus, so instead of a five up, it's a four up um, reanimation protocol, which is essentially a feel no pain. So here's how this new detachment works. Um, you start off with a Reclamation Legion. All right, you have to have at least a, one Reclamation Legion, but you can have multiple if you want. Now, for every Reclamation Legion you take, you can take a, because it's what's called the, the core. It's a core formation. There are core formations, there's auxiliary formations, and command formations. There's only really one command formation. And there's only one core formation. And then the rest are all auxiliary. So you have to take a core formation. And your core formation consists of one overlord, zero to one, zero, zero to two units of Lich Guard, one to four units of Immortals. So now you have to take Immortals. You can't only live off um, of Warriors. You have to have at least one squad of Immortals. Between two and eight units of Necron Warriors. And their, max, their min went up, so it's at least 80, you know, sorry, at least 20 up to 80 Necron Warriors. So that's pretty cool. One to three units of Tomb Blades. See, I never used Tomb Blades before, so I'm going to have to pick some up because now they're required for this, for this Force Org. And zero to three Monoliths. And that's your core part of your army. Now, for every core part you have, for every core formation that you bring, you can take up to one Royal Court, which is a, an auxiliary formation. And it is uh, one Overlord slash Emotech the Stormlord, because he's uh, now Lord Or. And for the Overlords, for both the Reclamation and the Royal Courts, um, a Catacomb Command Barge, Nemesis Zandrak, Trazen the Infinite, and Rakir the Traveler may also be taken in place of an Overlord. Um, one to three Lords, in which uh, Oberon can be taken instead of a Lord. And one to three cryptex. So now you're required to take for this royal court. If you take a royal court, you need to take at least one overlord or substitute person, one cryptek, and one lord. If you want to take the royal court. Plus, for every reclamation legion you take, so your core force org part formation, uh, you have access to a bunch of different uh, auxiliary formations. So you have. You can take what, between 1 and 10 per Reclamation Legion. I'm pretty sure you can take multiple of the same type. So, there's the Judicator Battalion. These are all different formations that you can take. And you have to, you can take, you have to take one, but you can take up to, 10 different form, up to 10 formations in any combination for every Reclamation Legion you take. So, there's the Judicator Battalion. One unit of Triarch Stalkers, two units of Triarch Praetorians. Destroyer Cult. One Destroyer Lord. Three units of destroyers, zero to one units of heavy destroyers. So again, if you want to take a bunch of destroyers, cool stuff. You have to take three. So minimum of three squads of destroyers. There's the Canoptech Harvest. One Canoptech Spider. One unit of Canoptech Wraiths. One unit of Canoptech Scarabs. There's one called Star God, which is one Catan Shard of the Deceiver, of the Nightbringer, Transcendent Catan or Tesseract Vault. So again, it's just basically, for this, this Star God, it is just a Catan, essentially. So one Catan is a Star God formation. There's the Annihilation Nexus, which is two Annihilation Barges and one Doomsday Arc. That's pretty scary. Flayed Ones, which is just a unit of Flayed Ones. Living Tomb, one Obelisk, zero to one, two Monoliths. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Uh, death Marks, which is just a unit of Death Marks. So if you want to take like three squads, like for example, you could take ten squads of Death Marks now, because that's ten auxiliary forces. So you just have a squad of Death Marks, like ten Death Marks on top of your Reclamation Legion. That'd be kind of fun. And uh, the last one is the Deathbringer Flight, which is two to four Doomsides. Pretty nasty stuff. So once again, if you really like Doom Sites, which they are still pretty good, and they're they're going to be very competent in this edition, uh, you could hypothetically take forty. That'd be a lot of points, obviously, but uh, you just fill your army. So you take the Reclamation Legion and just fill the rest of the points with Doom Sites. That'd be pretty nasty. So again, this uh, Decurian detachment is really interesting. Uh, it, it it has some required forces, but you could take some really nasty things in it. 
So, I think there's potential. I think there's really good potential for some competitive forces in this detachment. I think it's going to be really cool. Uh, up next, we should probably go through... Maybe, let's see what else. Sorry, I'm just going to go through things. Uh, boiler traits. Boiler traits are another good thing I always go with. So, uh, actually, no. Let's start with the, the special rules, and then we'll go through boiler traits. So, the first re, uh, special rule is reanimation protocol, which, as I said, is essentially a feel no pain now. So, roll a d6 each time the model, a model suffers an unsaved wound, like feel no pain. Subtracting one from the result if the to hit... If the hit roll that inflicted the wound had the instant death special rule. So, uh, minus one. So it's a six up. It's a five up normally. If it has an instant death special rule, it's a six up. On a five plus, discount the unsaved wound. Treat as having been saved. Certain special rules and war gear items can provide modifiers to this dice roll. These are cumulative. But the required dice roll can never be improved better than a four plus. So, basically, they can stack, but unless you're hit with a, an instant death weapon, the stacking doesn't have any uh, implications, because it can't stack past, past a 4-up. So, you know, if you have one thing, or if you just take the normal force organization, if you take, sorry, if you take the Decurian uh, detachment, it's a 4-plus. So, any other special rule, it stacks, but it doesn't stack unless you're up against an instant death weapon, which then it counteracts that, and it's back to the four up. So, kind of a useless statement, you know, because not that many things have instant death, I guess, but if they do have instant death, obviously t twice the toughness, or instant death special rule, um, you know, if you stack it, it will be a four up instead of the five up. It'd be really nice if you could drop it below that and have like a three up reanimation. So it's no longer about bringing back from the dead. Basically, reanimation is not bringing back from the dead. It's it's preventing the death, essentially. Because once the model is dead, it's off the battlefield. So resorbs are going to be different. There's no more... Uh, what was it called before? Uh, whatever. There's no more rules with the, the independent characters now. Because they, they don't, if they're the last member of the squad, they can still reanimate. Because now, if the rest of the squad is dead, they're just dead. You know? doesn't matter. And if they're dead, they're dead. That's the thing. It's preventing the death rather than bringing them back from the death. Uh, if a unit has both reanimation protocols and feel no pain, you only get one of them. Choose which one you want. So it's essentially feel no pain. Living Metal. A model with this special rule ignores the effects of crew shaken, but still loses the whole point. At the end of each of your turns, roll d6 for each of your heavy or super heavy vehicles that has less than its starting hall points, but it's not been destroyed. On a 6, model regains a hall point lost earlier in the game. And let's go through the Warlord traits. So the Warlord traits, uh, they're not really good. Some of them are okay, but they're not, you know, uh, a couple of them are good. My favorite one is number one. Enduring Will gives your Warlord Eternal Warrior. That's great. So it's a solid Warlord trait. You have an Eternal Warrior um, Warlord. Keeps him alive longer. Solid. Eternal Madness, your Warlord has the Zealot special rule. So for fear checks and stuff, that's good. Immortal Hubris is number three. Your Warlord and all friendly models with the Necron's faction with 12 inches of them reroll all failed morale, pinning, and fear checks. Cool. By the way, that's also the new theme of this list. The new theme of the Codex is kind of causing fear. It's kind of that. Mind Shackle is now a fear check. I'll go over that after. Hyperlogical Strategist is number four. While the Warlord is alive, you may add one, or sorry, add or subtract one to any of your reserve rolls and rolls to seize the initiative. So you seize on a five plus, essentially. That's not bad, and you can reroll reserves. It can really help. That's a that's a handy warlord trait to have. Number five, implacable conqueror, implacable conqueror. Uh, your warlord and all friendly units with the Necron's faction within twelve inches of him have the relentless and crusader special rules. Cool. And number six, this is a weird one. Honorable combatant. Your warlord must always issue or accept a challenge if able to do so, and rerolls all failed to hit rolls when fighting a challenge. No friendly character other than Vanguard Oberon can attempt a glorious intervention in a challenge involving the Warlord. If an enemy refuses a challenge issued by the Warlord, the Warlord gains the Hatred Special Rule for the remainder of the game. Cool. So those are the Warlord traits. And as I said, the big change right now, uh, just first glances, I'll be going over things later as well. Um, the big thing that everyone loved before was Mind Shackle Scarabs, and Mind Shackle Scarabs is pretty much nerfed into the ground. It... Um, 
it's now just a, a fear check on 3d6. So against any fearless army, no effect whatsoever. Uh, it will screw them over, but it used to make monstrous creatures destroy themselves, and that's gone, right? So it's just a fear check. It makes a fear check on 3d6. Uh, Chronometron, also a huge one. It used to allow chain. It used to allow a reroll in every phase. That's gone too. Chronometron just now adds a five plus and vulnerable save against shooting attacks. There's the Dispersion Shield, which uh, three of us invulnerable save. However, can never claim the two weapon bonus in a fight subphase, so it doesn't bounce things back anymore. Uh, Gloom Prism, which is a model equipped with the Gloom Prism, and all friendly models within 12 inches have the Adamantium Will Special Rule. So that's great for the Psychic Power Defense. So it's a five up uh, Deny the Witch. So that's a few of them. Uh, Phylactery, because once again, once the model's dead, it doesn't come back. So Phylactery has changed as well. Uh, it's now a model equipped with phylactery has the it will not die special rule if the model is the rider of in a chariot both he and the chariot will have the it will not die special rule again because he, once the model is dead it's dead you're trying to prevent the death now Reb, res orbs are also very different uh, a resurrection orb can be activated once per game immediately after the un, an unsuccessful reanimation protocols roll has been made for the bearer of the, re, of the resurrection orb or another model in the same unit so if you really want to keep a model alive you basically use this one time pop the orb you, may re you can re-roll the failed reanimation protocols roll and any further failed reanimation protocols roll made for the bearer or any other model in the same unit until the end of the phase. So it's only the end of the phase. If you know you're going in some heavy firepower or some heavy close combat attacks, pop the orb at the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, Shadow Loom, a model equipped with the Shadow Loom has a plus one cover save. And Shield Veins are three up armor save, which I think are definitely going to be worth taking on the... Um, on the fast attack guys, what are they called? The Tomb Blades. Yeah, there's also the powers of Catan, which are very interesting. They're shooting attacks. I don't know how good they're going to be, and I'll discuss that when we get to the Catan section, which is the Elite section. And finally, we'll go through Artifacts of the Eons. So uh, there's the Gauntlet of the, the Conflagrator, the Conflagrator, which is a, a one-use-only Flamer template, Strength 7 AP2. Pretty awesome. The Nightmare Shroud. Uh, it uh, confers a 2 plus armor save and the Fear Special Rule. In addition, once per game during any friendly shooting phase, the bearer can choose one enemy unit within 18 inches. The unit must immediately take a morale check. Um, units with a Fearless or they shall no fear have no... They automatically pass it. So it's a good armor. Cool. So you want to give your, your Overlord some nice armor. You know. Orb of Eternity. You've activated once per game, immediately after an unsuccessful reanimation protocol has been made by the bearer uh, for, the, sorry, has been made for the bearer of the Orb of Eternity or another model in the same unit. You can re-roll the failed reanimation protocols roll and any further failed reanimation protocols made for the bearer or any model in the same unit until the end of the phase. Furthermore, so that's basically a res orb so far. Furthermore, when the res Orb of Eternity is activated, all reanimation protocol rolls made by, for the bearer or any other model in the same unit receive a plus one bonus until the end of the phase including re-rolled reanimation protocols. Once again, the bonuses won't stack, so I don't get the plus one bonus, because it can't be better than four up anyway. So that one may not be worth taking. Solar Staff. 12 inch range, strength 5, AP3, assault 1, blind solar pulse, which is once per game at the start of any turn, the bearer can use a special rule. When he does, night fighting rules are not in effect for the remainder of the turn. In addition, when the special rule is used, enemy units targeting the bearer or his unit can only fire snap fire Snapshots until the end of the bearer's next turn. Until the start of the bearer's next turn, sorry. Veil of Darkness. The bearer in the Veil of Darkness has the Deep Strike special rule. That's going to be handy. Maybe you want to give him that so he can Deep Strike and just kill stuff. In addition, once per game, at the start of any friendly movement phase, the bearer can use the Veil of Darkness to remove himself and his unit from the table, even if they are locked in combat. Then they immediately arrive anywhere on the board using the rules of Deep Strike. So basically it's Oberon. And Void Reaper. Strength dash, strength plus two, sorry, range dash, strength plus two, AP two, melee, armor main, flesh main, mastercraft, two ended. Pretty nasty. So that's it. So as I said, those are my first impressions. I think this new force org is going to be really interesting and lead to a lot of really cool combinations. Unfortunately, it does make you have to take a minimum amount of like tomb blades. So you got to go buy some tomb blades and some uh, immortals if you don't have them. Like I'm going to go have to buy them. That way I can use this formation. And uh, it'll be interesting. Uh, 
it's going to be quicker. I think the game is going to be a lot quicker and less complicated with this new codex because of the changes to reanimation protocol. And uh, yeah, it's just basically a four up field of pain or five up field of pain, depending on what we have. Six, you know, minus one if you're it's instant death, plus one for all your stacking things. And uh, yeah, Gauze got slightly better, and almost everything got much cheaper. So I think it's I think it's going to be good. Uh, they will be still very susceptible to psychic powers, but they always were. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned for my next part where I'll be going over the. HQ section of the codex. So please leave comments in the comment section down below of what you feel about this codex. Do you have anything else to add? What do you think? Is it going to be good? Do you think it's going to be bad? Do you think it's going to be much changed? What do you think of the new force organization chart? So please leave comments in the comment section down below. And thank you very much for watching. Please like the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Really does help a lot. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting.